Hey guys, Ryan here from Zur, back at you with another lesson from the Foundation 6.3 release. Uh, we're really excited about this new component that we've put in for cards. Uh, cards are a really great way to parse out information on your site using links or call to actions or information. And uh, we are really excited to offer you this new lesson on them. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Rafi to dive into it. Uh, so take away Rafi. All right, thanks Ryan. So we're gonna check out cards in Foundation 6.3. This is an all new component and having this CSS available to you uh, in foundation is just going to speed up your prototyping and your production and just make everything a little bit quicker for you. So card component looks like this. You have an image, you can have a divider, um, now you can move this divider anywhere you want. And then there's also a card section which creates some padding and that's usually where your card like main content will go. So I'll show you around the code here just a bit. So we have our card and this is a card container. So div with a class of card. Uh, we also have an image in here and then you'll see the card divider class uh, wrapping some content and then a card section uh, div as well. And this actually creates uh, a little bit more padding um, for your content. So you notice the card divider has a little bit of a gray background. Of course we can adjust this, but we're gonna leave it like this. We're gonna just move some things around and show you how you can use this. So if I want this card divider to be below the uh, card section, we can have it at the bottom and make it a card footer. So. Uh, you can move this card divider anywhere you want. You can even have it at the top. It's just up to you wherever you move it around in the markup. So that's uh, one way to customize these cards. Now, another thing to note is how the image is held inside of the container. So the card has this nice border around it uh, just to create that differentiation from the rest of the content. and. So if you want the image to go full bleed like this, uh, the image just sits right inside of the card container. So as you can see here, it's at the same level as the card divider and the card section. It's sitting just inside of the card container and it doesn't have any other wrappers around it. Now, if we wanted to create some padding around that, we could actually wrap this again in a uh, card section. And if you spell it right, it will all work correctly. So we'll go ahead and indent that and drop in our closing div tag, there you go. So now we created some padding around the card image and you can create that effect as well. So this is all really good, easy to use kind of stuff. But now if we want to see how we can quickly theme and customize the cards uh, more rapidly, we have the settings file for that. So if you're using a SAS version of Foundation, you have access to the SAS settings for the cards, and we can quickly theme this up to make it look the way that we want. So we have a card background is the first variable here. So we could change this to anything we want. Let's change it to the primary color, which is a nice blue for now. And you can see that that updates right away. The card font color is set to the body font color, which would make sense in a you know, straight white uh, background. But we've changed that, so now we're going to change this to the white variable, um, which we have in the settings file already. Now you notice that this card divider, now the text is a little light for that card divider. So we'll jump to the card divider and instead of light gray, we'll make this a dark gray. Okay, so now that's looking a lot better. And we can also change the card border. Uh, so not only can we change the color of the card border, but we can actually thicken it up a little bit. Um, let's also make that primary, oh, primary color. So now we can make that border primary color. Now we can also add some box shadow to the cards. 
just to make it a little less flat and make it pop out of the page a bit. So we have this card shadow variable here. We're gonna go ahead and add some box shadow. So it's one of my favorite amounts of box shadow to use for cards. And I'm gonna be using an RGBA. And um, not a lot of people know this, but in an RGBA, you can actually use a hex value. Um, so you could do something like that. I'm actually gonna use one of the variables which maps to a hex value. So I'm gonna use uh, dark gray. And I'm gonna put my opacity on there. So as I do that, now you can see that there's a really nice box shadow there. It just kind of gives the card a little bit of depth and pops it out of the page. Now, of course, I can also set a radius to the cards. Uh, so there's a variable right here. It's set to the global radius. So this is really important. If you want to keep consistent radius throughout your application, uh, the global radius is actually used by a lot of different components. So uh, things like progress bars, buttons, callouts use the global radius variable. So if you set one global radius up here in the uh, global section, oops, so right here. So if we set uh, something like 20 pixels, which is ridiculous, uh, you can actually affect a lot of different components with that same global radius. But in most cases, it's gonna be something around three pixels, five pixels, maybe. So something a little more subtle like this. Now, that is the best practice to set it as the, at the global radius variable and change it there, and then that'll affect cards and buttons and progress bars, callouts, and other things like that. Um, but we could definitely just set it directly in the card border radius variable, uh, something like 20 pixels if we want to get ridiculous. So there you go. Um, but we're actually going to set this back to something a little bit more reasonable, but still on the higher side. So 10 pixels, let's go with that. And then uh, we also have some variables for card padding and card margin. So card padding will actually be the, now padding is on the inside of a box. So uh, right now card padding is set to one rem in the global settings. Now you can hard code any kind of padding you want in here. So we want uh, 0, 2, 5 rem, something like that. And you can see that all the padding shrinks up. So that not only affects the padding of the divider, uh, the padding of the section, and the padding of the section that's also wrapping this image here. So you can do that, or we could even, uh, this is probably a little less known, but you can even just do some math. So I want the global padding divided by two, uh, and you could do that as well, and now it'll cut it by 50%. Um, so that's a nice way of being able to use your global variables, but then also being able to adjust them um, from one place. And then card margin is the bottom margin of your card. So uh, right now it's set to global margin. Again, this is one rem. Now this comes into play when you're actually stacking a lot of cards. So I have a simple block grid with some columns here, uh, wrapping the cards. And so, as I add more cards into the mix, uh, you can see that now they're vertically spaced from each other, and that's created by the card margin. So that card margin creates that spacing, and you can set it to be the same spacing as the column gutter as well, if you'd like to keep that visual consistency. So there's a lot you can do with cards. Uh, best practice with cards is to put the cards inside of your columns to size them, and if you wanted to change that up and you know set specific widths to your columns, so this is a block grid, it doesn't care how many columns you put into it, uh, and it'll just keep stacking them up. In this case, three on a medium screen and then two on a small screen, so when we get down to a small screen, it'll stack down to two, but it'll just keep wrapping them. So, but if we wanted to you know set some specific widths to these columns, no problem, you could just do that here. So just for demonstration's sake, let's make this a medium four. Let's make this a 
medium, five, and we can make this a medium three. And so you can see how uh, we'll get rid of these extra columns. And so now you can see that you can set the specific width of the cards with your columns. And that is the best way to do it to get that consistency. So there's a lot more you could do with cards. And um, in a future lesson, we'll be talking about Flexbox helpers for cards because cards actually can be used in flex mode as well. This is the one I'm showing you here is the standard version, but the markup is the same if you're using the Flexbox version. So uh, a lot more that you could do with cards and I'm really excited to see what you guys can do with them. Uh, back to you, Ryan. Awesome, thanks Rafi. See, isn't it super easy to implement cards in Foundation 6.3? And show us what you guys are working on. We'd love to see how creative you're being. And to further help you with implementing these, you should check out our blog post on five common mistakes designers usually make when they're using these cards and designs. So check out the link below in the description and make sure to come back next week for our next design lesson. It's gonna be super sweet, I promise. This is Ryan from Zurb signing off. Hope you guys have a great holiday season. Haha. <laughs>